There we go. Uh, so, Rice, uh, again, thanks uh, for doing this interview for uh, PolygonReview.com with me, Sebastian Hoberg. How are we today? I am awesome. How about you? I'm in my last week of work, I should mention that, which is probably why I feel awesome. <laughs> that does sound like an awesome generator, I must say. I'm in the first week of college, so it's a different kind of awesome, but it's not bad. It's also 2 o'clock in the morning, but that's okay. That's okay, too. Um, Europe, America, all tra lost in translation and all that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I um, thought I was um, going to ask you, uh, from the sort of um, perspective of you being the bad boy of StarCraft commentaries, uh, you've been called that by some, myself included, what do you have to say about that? Well, it's kind of funny, it's, it's tough to be a bad boy of a video game, I would imagine, but well, yeah. <laughs> if it's possible, uh, I suppose it's better to be the bad boy than the pansy but uh <laughs> you know i mean i really just say what i think for the most part and people worry about offending people way too much and i think people just need to lighten up sometimes so if that makes me the bad boy you know i'm all for it as long as people who are listening are having fun i think it's uh perfectly fine well in in the world of starcraft we don't have that many hardcore rock stars to compare with it's firebat hero uh, your idol, as we all know, and uh, he might be bad, but uh, he's still a hardcore nerd. Uh, no one can really <laughs> mistake about that. Uh, I read something about him uh, saying that he will dominate Pro League, hopefully, again this season. Uh, do you think he will? Well, I don't know. I mean, he's probably going to have to make some room for Hyuk, who is uh, <laughs> destroying everyone these days yeah. and uh, turning into to, to my new hero, to be uh, sure for now. I mean, until Firebat Hero starts being able to beat some Protoss players, it's really hard to root for a kid who just cannot beat an entire race. Uh, when one in three of your opponents is uh, a race that you just can't play against, you know, it gets embarrassing after a while. But uh, I do think he's going to do well. I, I think that his personality lends to wanting to play well and putting in a lot of effort just because I think he likes to be the center of attention. And, you know, egomaniacs all over the world put in a ton of effort to be the best at what they do so they can have that attention. So if that's the case, if that's true, I expect uh, a pretty good showing from him in the future. Uh I think that's very possible, and I do hope so. Uh, I mean, egomaniacs, as you say. We have David Letterman as a good example. They can do quite well, even if Firebat Hero is a bit minority challenged, so to speak. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, you mentioned Yuk. That has uh, really caused an uproar, uh, a minor uproar, but anyway, uh, in the community lately. Uh, he really turned that uh, final of the STX Masters Cup around. It was amazing. Um, quite astonishing, really. Oh, I agree completely. It was, uh, but you got to say, you know, he's one of the most under uh, underestimated at the very maybe maybe in general not underestimated because he tends to be bad, but he's got to be underestimated at this point. And just the fact that his coach was willing to put him in at that point was uh, re really was an interesting uh, sight in itself. And I'm really glad he won, to be honest, because uh, <laughs> of all the hate that he gets from. Even the foreigners, it, it's well deserved that he finally got a win and got to rub it in everybody's face. Absolutely. Uh, to be yuked now means something quite different. I'm not sure what it means, but it's it's different than what it used to be, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, we sort of skipped over the introduction uh, and got right on the Firebat Hero issue. But uh, uh, would you mind telling us a bit more about uh, yourself and why you're doing uh, StarCraft commentaries and uh, etc.? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, as you guys know, I call myself Rise. That's a name I came up with a long, long time ago. No need to go into that story. And uh, I, you know, I got I got a lot of interest that I think uh, a lot of StarCraft players do. I'm obviously a bit of a nerd if I'm playing a game ten years after it came out. But I enjoy a lot of the strategy and and uh, competition in the sport. And the community itself is pretty great for the most part. So that it, it itself keeps me engaged and wanting to do commentaries and. Really, it was, uh, I think Mole Trap was the first time I ever heard someone do a commentary before. And I remember listening to him, and I had been watching him for maybe uh, four or five episodes when I, when I realized, I was like, wow, wait a second, I bet I could do that. And so I decided to give it a try. And, uh, you know, that actually ended up making me one of the first few commentators. Now, obviously, I was 
uh, after Clazar Diggity and Mole Trap, but I was probably uh, right out around the time that Cholera came out, uh, and Psionic Reaver, I know, had done some a while back, but then he kind of got into other things. But uh, So yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is the community has only gotten stronger with the advent of things like YouTube now that everybody can actually see these foreign games. Uh, communities have really started to grow, and even though it's a very niche community and uh, it's it's very difficult to connect to people with just the, the way that things have spread has made it a lot easier. So I, I continually get new fans and, and people interested in the sport, which is really rewarding uh, to, to continue commentating. And so, you know, for those reasons, I, I keep going. Uh, although I haven't done any in quite a while. And now that I'm unemployed, I'm going to be doing quite a few. So right. uh, certainly going to keep putting them out. Well, your unemployment is um, our gain, uh, you must <laughs> yeah. say. Uh, uh, well, that's great news from our perspective to hear. Um, and, uh, well, going from uh, the beginning to the future, uh, StarCraft 2 is around the corner. I don't know if you have uh, been lucky enough to play it. Uh, but uh, wh what do you see, the not, not just the game, but the community around the game? Uh, wh wh where do you see it go from where it is now into the future? Well, the first thing that I've done is uh, obviously every time a battle report comes out, I watch that. I keep up on the site to make sure I catch any updates. Uh, but as well as that, I, I haven't actually played it myself, but I do make sure to read whenever someone posts an experience in playing it. And a lot of experiences are posted over at TeamLiquid.net. Yeah. And so I've been I've been sure to read up on those. And, and so far, I'll be honest, I'm a little uh, – I'm not going to say worried, but I guess uh, – apprehensive about the release of the game because it, it's such a difficult game to balance. It, it took so much time and effort, so many patches, and really not until about 1.0, I don't know, 7 or 8, did people really start to consider it to be a very balanced game. And StarCraft 2 is going through the same growing pains already with the uh, the, the queen, the, the Zerg queen being able to inject larva. Basically, we've been, people have been finding out, I think Chill actually wrote about it, or maybe it was someone else. I don't, I don't remember. Hotbit, uh, I think. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Hotbit. They found out that basically no strategy can beat the Zerg if he uses Inject Lara just because it's so overpowered. And while, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where, well, yeah, of course, Blizzard now knows about it. They're going to fix it. it. It's it's funny to me because I think of, wow, the developers totally don't play a game from the perspective of uh, a player who's looking to exploit the game. You know, they just look at it as the straight up gameplay against the computer in a lot of situations where fun one versus one where you go up the tech tree where you build a marine, then you build a fire bat, then you build a medic. Then what? Oh, you build a vulture and a tank. And then you build a Goliath. And then maybe a Wraith. Then maybe a science vessel. And then finally a battle cruiser. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. the progression doesn't actually work like that. So I I'm curious if they're going to be able to really release a polished game or if it's going to, again, take a lot of patches. But nonetheless, I'm really excited about the release of it. And I think there will be a big community about it. But at the same time, I wonder about the influx of new players and how that's going to work out towards the game in terms of uh, basically a whole new crowd. It's not going to be a niche culture anymore. It's going to be wide open for everybody to play and everybody to get interested in. So it'll be interesting. There will be changes for sure. And I'll make sure to link to the Team Liquid article you were referring to in the uh, actual interview. Um, but yes, uh, the... There are changing times and the future is unknown and there will clearly be, uh, I think some people uh, would say, a new bifurcation of the scene. Um, whether, yeah, will be a chism uh, between new and old and I guess we'll see how that turns out. Uh, but, um, well, uh, speaking of which, uh, do you have any predictions about beta? That's always a fun question to ask someone when that will come out. Oh, what, what you mean uh, when it'll come out or, or uh, gameplay or what? Uh, no, when the beta will come out. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I remember hearing back in uh, last year, last November, it was supposed to come out. So we, we know that didn't happen. Uh, I, would, I would suspect it won't actually come out until really late Q4, uh, maybe first month of Q1 of 2010 because there's just so many issues and, and as bugs as simple as the ones that we were talking about before get un, uh, discovered, mm -hmm. I think they have to redig through some of the mechanics and refine a lot of the processes that they already thought they may have had completed. So I'd say there's still work to be done, although it certainly is becoming uh, a much more polished and finished game. So I'm going to say end of Q4. 
Alright, that would be a nice Christmas present indeed. Um, sticking with StarCraft 2 for a 